Welcome to class today. We are going to look at paper 5-2, October-November 2022 for Cambridge International AS and A-Level Mathematics, that is Probability and Statistics 1. My name is Teacher Simon. Question number one, they are saying, on any day, Kino travels to school by bus, by car, or on foot with probabilities of 0 0.1, I mean 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0 0.7 respectively. The probability that he is late when he travels by bus is X. The probability that he is late when he travels by car is 2X. And the probability that he is late when he travels on foot is 0 0.25. The probability that on a randomly chosen day, Kino is late is 0 0.235. So the best way to do this question is to first draw a probability tree diagram for the possibilities that we have. So this person can travel by bus, by car, or by foot. And those are the probabilities given, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0 0.7. And they are saying when he travels by bus, the probability that he's late is X. So from here on bus, then you put either late or not late. So if he's late is X, that means the probability that he's not late is one minus two X. Then when he travels by car, the probability that he's late is two X. Then when he is not late, that will be one minus 2x. Remember, for the branches that you have for every instance, it has to be the probability of those branches has to be equal to 1. The sum of those probabilities has to be equal to 1. So that's why we say 1 minus this one, which is no 1 minus x. Okay. And then when this person travels by foot, the probability that um, he is late is 0 0.25. That means the probability that he's not late will be 1 minus 0 0.25, which is 0. 7, 5. So they have given us that on a randomly chosen day, Kino is late, the probability is 0 0.235. So when this person is late, that means we he can be late when he travels by bus. So bus, late, then car, late, then foot, late. So we have to put all of this into consideration. So now we are having this 0 0.235 for late, and then travels by bus and is late 0 0.2 times x, then 0 0.1 here times 2x, and then 0 0.7 times 0 0.25. So we shall have um, uh, these ones added, of course, it will be 0 0.4x. Now we shall bring this one, this side, 0 0.235 minus 0 0.175, and uh, that one will give you 0 0.06. So when you divide by 0 0.4, it gives you 0 0.15. So that's the value of x. Then part B, they are saying that find the probability that on a randomly chosen day, Kino travels to school by car given that he is not late. So given that this is now what we call conditional probability. Okay, conditional probability. So when you check conditional probability, probability of A given B, this is how it is written, A given B, you put a stroke, and then you say A intersection B out of probability of B. So that's what we are going to do here car given that he is not late so down here we shall have probability of uh, this person not being late and then c intersection l prime so c intersection l prime is here c l prime and uh, we know that the probability of something occurring plus the probability of it not occurring will always give you one so if they give us the probability of kino being late is 0 0.235 that means the probability that he is not late would be one minus that probability of him being late. So we have uh, C intersection L, probability of C here, we saw it as 0 0.1, and then not being late here, so it would be one minus two times X, which X is 0 0.15. So we shall put one minus two times 0 0.15. And uh, then we divide one minus 0 0.235. So, up here, uh, we shall get, if you check, uh, 1 minus 2 times 0 point, um, 0 0.15, I think that's a 0 0.3. So minus that, it will, give, it will give you 0 0.7. But then that one, you will multiply it by 0 0.1. So it gives you uh, 0 0.07, you see? 0 0.07 which you're having up here and then 1 minus 0 
that one is uh, 0 0.6 uh, so when you say 0 0.07 divide by 0 0.765 all together you get 14 out of 153 if you have to put it to decimal places then it has to be to three decimal places so it has to be 0 0.0915 not three decimal places to three significant figures okay next question they're saying that the lengths of the rods produced by a company are normally distributed with mean 55.6 millimeters and standard deviation 1.2 millimeters so in a random sample of 400 of these roads how many would you expect that's an expectation okay expected value expected length have the length less than 54.8 so this being a normal distribution i mean uh, so, so we have to standardize here into the normal so you know that uh, to standardize z is equal to x minus mean then divide by the standard deviation so our x here is 54.8 minus then the 55.6 divided by 1.2 then uh using the bell shaped so the negative z is on the left and for the standard normal the mean is zero so this is the figure we are looking for and it might it is the same as the greater than this positive one here but if you have a calculator you just put it in the statistics mode so like that is three then i can press sc then from there i press shift then here where do we start on distribution so i press one and then i come to distribution which is five so press a five there uh, p is for less than uh, so r is for greater than q is for from zero to that given figure so we are going to use uh, less than that is p one and then you just put negative 2 over 3. Just put it there like that. The calculator will give you the answer. 0 0.25249. So I put here calculator. That's what I've used. And then uh, next, they have said they, uh, they, they want the, the number of, road ro of those roads that we would expect to have a length of uh, less than... 54.8 so that's an expectation which is equal to np so n is 400 then times this probability that you have gotten here and uh, when you multiply this one with 400 then it will give you 100.996 so uh, you can either write 100 or 109 because you will not have a road that is 0 0.9 you know so all be together like some part of it so either you are going to have 100 or 101. And then uh, we said that find the probability that a randomly chosen road produced by this company has a length that is within half a standard deviation of the mean. This is what it means. You get the modulus of the x then minus the mean, then less than a half of the standard deviation, 0 0.5 standard deviation. And of course, uh, in the modulus, this is like you're ranging from the negative of this figure to the positive of this figure. So that is negative of a standard deviation of 2 and then uh, x minus mu and then to this. So standardizing, okay, we need to first change this one to x. So take the mu this way and also this side. So when it comes this way, it comes as a plus because here it is a minus. So you have now mu minus uh, standard deviation over 2. And also when it comes this side, it will be standard deviation over 2 then plus the mean. Now, when uh, we have to standardize this, so standardizing it is zx minus uh, mu out of standard deviation. So this figure we are having here, then minus mu, then divide by the standard deviation. The same thing we do this side. Now you realize that this one will disappear, the mu will disappear, and then you have delta over 2, and there's also a delta, so that delta will go. And then you have negative 0 0.5 here, and also here 0 0.5 now this one is the same as how does it come to this now in one of the videos i showed you that you if you want to get in between these two you are going to get the probability uh, of z less than the 0 0.5 minus probability of z less than this negative okay but the probability of this one which is negative is the same as the one greater you see so if it is the same as the one which is greater, 
you can have something like this probability of z less than the 0 0.5 then minus probability of z less than the negative 0 0.5 but still uh, this one is the same as one it's like one minus because less than the negative is the same as greater than the positive this way so it has to be one minus mm, mm, probability of z less than okay 0 0.5 because if you have for the less than i mean for the greater than you have something this way to get the probability here, you have to get the whole total, which is 1, then minus this less than. Okay? So that's what I've put here. Now, when you open the brackets, the minus and the minus will make this one positive. You see that? So you have probability of z less than 0 0.5, then plus probability of z less than 0 0.5. So you get it as a 2 here, then minus the 1 here. And then, so, so long as you have your uh this value if you have this value the same as the one which is here just say twice of this minus one okay twice of probability of z less than that like that is 0 0.5 and then from there you put uh minus one but remember since we are having our calculator here let us just put this thing inside here remember it is for less than so if it is for less than, already start is there, just put uh, shift, then 1, then you go to 5 distribution. Remember it is P for less than, so we put 1, and this is 0 0.5. You see that? Then um, we can subtract, you can even just put it right away there. Uh, again, press shift, then 1, then 5, then uh, 1, and then you put negative 0 0.5. See, and then all together it will give you the answer 0 0.38292. That is the one there. Also, I can have uh, already we have gotten this one here, so twice of it we can put twice of that, then minus a one. It can also give you the same answer. So our answer then becomes 0 0.38292. Three. Next, they are saying number three uh, that three fair six sided dice, each with faces marked one to six, are thrown at the same time repeatedly. So the score on each throw is the sum of the numbers on the uppermost faces. And since this experiment is done repeatedly, so it is either a binomial or a geometric. But then you get to know whether it is a binomial or a geometric based on the number of times the experiment is done is it fixed then it is a binomial if it's not fixed then it is a uh, geometric now part a they are saying find the probability that a score of 17 or more is first obtained on the sixth throw so that you don't know the number of times the experiment is done okay it's not fixed but they have told you that uh, what we are interested in is obtained on the is obtained the first time on the sixth throw maybe we did the experiment 20 times but this one happened on the sixth row you don't know so therefore this one uh, is a geometric distribution find the probability that a score of 17 remember we are adding them so if they are three for you to get 17 that means you have six six and five so on the first one you get a six on the second one a six then on the last one a five or you can get a six on the first one five on the second one a six on the third one or you can get a five on the first one six on the second one and this on the third so if you first get the uh, this one here six six five then move until five comes to the beginning part so as simple as that a bit of getting a six and here is one over six so that's one over six times one over six times one over six even for the five and all of this together is three out of two one six so that's when you are getting 17 if they say 17 or more the maximum we can get for more is going to be 18 for these three dice. So you have six and a six and a six, you see? So that one becomes one over 216. So if they say 
uh, the probability that a score of 17 or more, then we have to put these two together. So probability of 17 or more is now going to give us our P because for the geometric still we have to get what we call the probability of getting the success and then uh, the failure. So if we don't get a sum of 17 or more, then it is a failure. So our P is going to be the sum of these two. So that is 4 out of 216. Or simplified it is 1 out of 54 so that means q will be 1 minus that which is 53 out of 54 remember i told you this is a geometric distribution because you don't know the number of times this experiment is done but what you are interested in uh goes through just after the after the sixth row so we take this as a geometric distribution and for the geometric distribution if we have probability of x is equal to r then that means if okay if it happens on the third throw that means the first two the the the, the, the you, you are failing you get it so here you are having if probability of x is equal to r then that means we shall get this is q power r minus one and then p so coming back to our question here it happens on the sixth throw that means the first five times you're failing so q power five then times p power one so you have your Q, which is 53 over 54, you power it with a 5, then times the P here, power 1, you have 1 out of 54. And you are going to have, so you can put this one uh, in a calculator. Okay, let me first remove this uh, because it might affect, okay, let me take it back to the normal mode. So we have 54, I mean 53 out of 54 then this one uh, sorry it is to the power of 5 and then we shall multiply it with 1 out of 54 so you have 1 out of 54 and then uh, of course this one is to the power of 1 so your answer becomes 0 0.0168 and the rest of those figures but to three significant figures it becomes 0. Point uh, one six nine then part b they say that find a probability that a score of 17 or more is obtained in fewer than eight throws so if they say in fewer than eight throws that means you can obtain it on the first or on the second that means the first you fail you get it on the second then the first two you fail then you get it on the third the first three you fail on the fourth on the fifth on the sixth and on the seventh so you are supposed to put all of these together. Hmm? You are supposed to get this one here, then this one. Remember, it is beginning from this way. Hmm? You take this, you add that, you add this, you add that, you add this. So when I tick here, it means that I'm coming from this other side, hmm? like that, up to there. So all of those put together, you realize, it, you realize that it is only this part here, only failures that is left out. You get it. And total probability is always what? 1. So instead of considering P, then plus QP, plus Q squared P, plus Q cubed P, and the rest of those, I will just say 1 minus fading these 7 times. So I will say 1 minus Q power 7. And our Q is 53 over 54. And then I power that to 7. And then we get our answer as... Uh, zero point proving that let me just try to take this one back here and it has to be to power seven then we say one one minus that so it is zero point one two two and the rest of that and the three significant figures the answer becomes zero point one two three next this one is about statistics. They are saying that the time is taken in minutes to complete a word processing task by 250 employees at a particular company are summarized in the table. So the table is here, and then they are saying that draw a histogram. So before you draw a histogram, first check whether the class intervals are the same. But of course, for A level, the class, the class widths, not intervals, the class widths are the same. So if they are the same, that means you're going to plot frequency against class boundaries but in a level they rarely do that so they give you classes with 
widths, which are not the same like here, 0 to 20. So the class width here is 20, here it is 20, here it is 10, 10, then here it is 40. You see that? So we have to plot, when we are plotting our histogram, we have to plot frequency density against the class uh, boundaries. So and um, to get the, the frequency density, you get frequency divided by the class widths. So the frequency here is 32 divided by 20, that's 1.6. Then here it is 46 divided by the class width here 20, you get 2.3. Then 9.6 divided by 10. Then here 5.2 divided by 10. And then here 24 divided by 40. And then we can draw on our graph. Remember to use uniform scales. Now, the good thing about such, uh, about such intervals is that you don't have to add a 0.5 on the upper classes on the upper class limit and subtract a 0.5 on the lower class limit so long as you have this less than or equal to like that so those are the classes okay because the end point here has to be the beginning part here so it is already continuous so what we need to do uh, is to write you don't when you are writing down uh, here on this axis the t-axis you don't write these values that you're having here that is 0 20 then maybe like like you put 20 here, then 40, then you put 50, 60. No, choose a uniform scale. Like I, I chose here, every after one centimeter, I put 10 units. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 everywhere. Then I begin to plot. So from, I mean, it is from 0 to 20, that is uh, 1.6. So 0 to 20, that's 1.6. That's 1.6. So when you look at this, the figures that I used here, every one unit, uh, one unit, that's for a centimeter. So five, a unit has five small boxes. So five small boxes, uh, what's the equivalence of a small box? So this is one unit divided by five small boxes. So it is 0 0.2. So if I'm looking for, for 1.6, that means this is 1, then 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. So it will be this, then I draw. It is optional to shade, but I always shade such that things come out very clear. And then 20 to 40, it is 2.3. So remember, let me try to enlarge a little bit. Uh, you can see that, we remember we say that each small box is equivalent to 0 0.2, right? So this is 2.2. This will be 2.4. That means in the middle, that's where we shall have 2.3. And then the next one is uh, from 40 to 50. 40 to 50, that is 9.6. So this is our 9.6. 9.246. And uh, we'll draw from 40 to 50. Then 50 to 60 is 5. Point, is it 5.2? Yes, 5.2. Yep. So we'll draw this 5.2. And then the rest of this one, uh, the, the remaining part is uh, 0 0.6. So from 6 to 100, those are three small boxes. And that is our histogram. The next, they tell us that from the data, the estimate of the mean, the mean time taken by these 250 employees is 43.2 minutes. Calculate an estimate of the standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is summation of F x squared divided by summation of f then minus the mean squared okay it's root of variance so that means we need to have this column of f x squared already mean is given okay so because this is grouped data our x is the mid value okay the mid value so like this is 0 plus 20 that's 20 divided by 2 then you get the 10 then here 20 plus 40, that is 30, I mean uh, 60 divided by 230. Then here the mid is 45, and then here it is 55, and then here 160 divided by 2, that is 80. So we, then we need fx squared. So that means we shall square the x, then after we multiply by the f. So when you square here, that is 100, then times the 32. Then when you square this one, uh, 900, then times the 46, okay? So, and then 45 squared, then times 96. You see, you have 194, 400. Then we have 55 squared, then uh, times 52. 
you see 157300 and then 80 squared and then times 24 Aaron gives you 153600 then we add all of these together and when we add them like I can show one uh, that answer them plus 157 300 then plus 194 400 then plus 41 400 then plus 3200 and your answer is going to be 549,900 okay then that one we shall divide by the summation of f of course that one represents the number of uh, these employees it's already here 250 but still you can add up the frequencies and then you get that answer still which is 200 and what and 50 so that answer we have gotten if we divide it by 250 we get uh, that figure 2199.6 then we can subtract uh, 43.2 when it is squared and then the figure you get you can take the square root of that and then it will give you 18.258 and the rest of those the three significant figures the answer becomes 18.3 next so it's about probabilities so they are saying eric has three coins one of the coins is fair that means the probability of getting a head is is a half and also the probability of getting a tail is a half then they are saying the two other coins are each biased so that the probability of obtaining a head is a quarter that means the probability of getting a tail is three quarters okay so eric throws all three coins at the same time Events A and B are, defi are defined as follows. So before I even do that, I come here, I draw my probability tree diagram to simplify the work. So the first one is unbiased. In other words, it is fair. So the probability of getting a head is a half, and that of a tail is a half. Then the second one, head tail. So it is a quarter and then a third. And then the third one, it's also head tail. So a quarter uh, and then not a third, it is three over four. A quarter, three over four everywhere. And then they are telling us that all three coins show the same result. Okay, that means it can be a head, 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 and then a tail, tail, tail. You see, same result. And then they are saying B, at least one of the biased coins shows a head. That means it can show a head. It can be one head eh? or two heads. Like the two biased coins can both show heads. You can see it. You see that? So now let let's go on so probability of b what are we going to take which roots are we going to take a head for the biased and then this so we shall take this but of course we have to begin from this side okay so there is that one then there is this one you see that but of course we are beginning from this way and then uh, we can also take this on a tail and then a head you see then we can also now tail tail we shall not take it then head, head, uh -huh. then there is also uh, a tail and a head. But they are beginning from this way. The experiment begins from this way. Now, do you realize that we have only left out this part and this part? Only those two. So instead of taking all of these roots, one, two, three, four, five, to waste time, you just say one minus the ones that are left because for them they are smaller. So... That is head, tail, tail. That's what we are having here. So we have a half, then times 3 over 4, times 3 over 4. And then this other one is a half, times... Uh, oh, there is also this one, by the way. Head, tail. It's also there. So that's why we are left with only these ones. So a half, then 3 over 4, 3 over 4. So this one becomes uh, 16 over 9. So we say 1 minus... Not 16 over 9, sorry. 9 over 16 so 1 minus 9 over 16 then we get our answer as 7 over 16 see and then um, next part they are saying that find a probability of a given b remember probability of a given b is probability of a intersection b and then uh, over probability of b but we need uh, to find probability of 
A intersection B. So A intersection B is when you are having, first of all, A, they are telling us that uh, all three coins show the same result. So if they show the same result, then it has to be head, 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 or tail, tail, tail. You see that? But for B, if they're saying at least one of the biased coins shows a head, so the only way these ones can intersect, that is when, uh, for B, all heads. You see that? So head, same result, head, head, head. And here, at least it shows a head, so there must not be any tail. So we shall have head, head, and head for probability of A, intersection B. And head, 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 you come here, head, head, and head which is going to be a half times a quarter times a quarter, which gives us 1 over uh, 32. Yes, 1 over 32. And then probability of B, which we have gotten up here as 7 over 16. So you divide by that 7 over 16. Of course, in fractions, this one will somersault. So the 16 will, will go up, and then you have 1 over 32 times 16 over 7. Simplified, it becomes 1 over 14. Then the next part, they said that the random variable x is the number of heads obtained when Eric throws the three coins. So we can get no head at all. That means you're getting a tail, tail, and a tail. So tail, tail, and a tail. Uh, allow me first to remove, first to remove this such that everything becomes very clear. Now, we can have tail 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 that is no head okay that's a half and then three over four and then three over four and then we get nine over 32 and then x is equal to one that is one head there is a possibility of getting one head that means you can get for the first one a tail tail head so you look at these possibilities here only one head you can get tail tail head you see this tail tail head then tail head tail then head, tail, tail. Okay, so those are the only ones. So putting all those together, tail, remember this one is for the, the, the one which is uh, fair, so it's a half, and then tail for this one for the biased. So the rest here, I made them to be for the biased. So three over four, one over four, then again a half, then one over four, then three over four, one over two, then three over four, three over four. So all of it together, it gives us 15 out of 32. And then there is a possibility of getting two heads. So the first one gives a head, head, then a tail. Then head, tail, head. Then a tail, head, tail. So the moment you have head, 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 then you move this T until it comes here. As simple as that. So we can have a half. Then head for the bias one is 1 over 4. Tail, 3 over 4. So the same thing here. 3 over 4, 1 over 4. Then... 1 over 4, 1 over 4, and then all together, it gives us 7 over 32. And then there is a possibility of getting three heads. That's a half times a quarter times a quarter, 1 over 32. And then drawing the probability distribution table, x values are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So probability of x is equal to x we have for 0 is 9 over 32, 15 over 32, 7 over 32, and 1 over 32. And of course, to prove that something is a probability distribution, then when you add up all these probabilities, you must be in position to get 1. Let's check. 9 plus uh, 15, and that'll be 24. 24. 24 plus 7, that will be 31. Then plus 1 will be 32. So over 32, that gives us 1. Okay. Next question, they are saying that at a company's call center, 90% of the callers are connected immediately to a representative. A random sample of 12 callers is chosen. Find a probability that fewer than 10 of these callers are connected immediately. So now, um, this, is a re a, this is an experiment which is re repeated. So that means it is either a binomial or a geometric. But now since the number of times the experiment is done, Sample of 12 callers, you see, they call, they wait, they are picked immediately, then that's a success. Then again, we repeat, another person does so, and they are picked, so until the 12 is done. So it's a repetitive experiment, so it is a binomial, because the number of 
times it is done is fixed. So it's a binomial. See that? And uh, of course, we have something for the binomial. Let's say the conditions for the binomial are there has to be a fixed number of trials. You see that? Each trial must have the same two possible outcomes. Normally, a success and a failure. So the probability of getting a success, we always call it P, and for the failure is Q. And then, so the outcomes of the trials have to be independent of one another. So it continues on and on. The probability of the success remains, and that of the failure also remains. Okay? So uh, we continue. And then here, so our N is 12, then the probability... Our p is 0 0.9 and then our q is 0 0.1. I say that this is a binomial since the number of trials are fixed. So they are saying that find a probability that fewer than 10 of these colors are connected immediately. So fewer than 10 is this. So that means you're going to consider 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. And that will surely take a lot of time. So instead, we can find this other extreme. And we say 1 minus... If 10 here is not included, then I will include it here. So from 10 and above. So we shall have 1 minus probability of x is equal to 10 plus probability of x is equal to 11 plus probability of x is equal to 12. And for binomials, probability of x is equal to x. We always do it like this. N combin probability of x is equal to r is n combination r, then p, power r, then q, n minus r. So therefore, uh, if it is 10... Then that will be 12 combination 10 then our p is 0 0.9 power 10 and then our q is 0 0.1 power 2 and the rest of this when it is 11 12 combination 11 0 0.9 power 11 and the rest of all of these and these are the answers you get when you put in your calculator when subtracted from one automatically you will get let me just prove one here uh, 12 combination that is shift then combination then this is 10, uh, and then from there we can say times, Then I can put this one here, 0 0.9, it is power 10, and then uh, we also have 0 0.1 power 2, and then you will get 0 0.230. You get 0 0.230 and the rest of the all of this. So when you add all of this together and you subtract from 1, you get your answer as 0 0.11. So part, uh, part B, they are saying a random sample of 8 colors is chosen. Use an approximation to find the probability that more than 69 of these colors are connected immediately. So this random sample is really too big. When you check the NP, 8 times 0 0.9, that is 72, which is far greater than 5. And also, NQ, that is 80, then times uh, 0 0.1, that is 8 greater than 5. So if you find that NP and NQ are greater than 5, then that implies that uh, we are supposed to approximate now the uh, norm of the binomial. So we need to, but before we do that, of course, the mean for the binomial is NP. So you have to get the mean because for standard deviation, I mean for normal distributions, you have to use uh, mean and then the standard deviation. So when you get 80 times 0 0.9, you get 72. And then standard deviation is root of variance and variance is given by NPQ. So 80 times 0 0.9, then times 0 0.1. Inside here, you get 0 point, I mean 7.2. So you have to get the square root of uh, 7.2 but this one is not exact so you can leave it out now when we are approximating from the binomial to a normal now we are moving from discrete to continuous data so we need to carry out what we call continuity correction so greater than if they say that we are finding the probability of x greater than 69 that means that we are going to carry out this continuity correction this is how you do it Let's look at a number 69 they have told us. So if you have 69 here, the number next to it is going to be 70. See? And then the number before it is going to be 68. Now we see that 69 uh, ceases to be 69 at 69.5 because when you round off 69.5, you will get a 70. And also here, 69 begins to be that 69 at 68.5 because when you round off the 65, I mean the 
you get the 69 so this is the what this is what we call the lower bound is 68.5 and then the upper bound is uh, 69.5 now when we say greater than 69 so you have to look at that figure that when you round it off it is never 69 like it goes beyond 69 you get it is greater than 69 so when we round off this 68.5 it will give us 69 but when we round off this 69.5 it will give us a 70 so that is greater than 69 so that means instead of taking this 69 we shall take the 69.5 so we shall add a 0 0.5 when they use this greater than then from there uh we standardize now remember z is got by getting x minus mu divided by the standard deviation so you put all of that now we are just going to put all of this in the calculator and we say uh 69.5 actually remember when we are putting in the calculator the calculator has to be in sd mode so you first put sd put press mode and uh okay this one we shall put statistics so it has to be three and then you can press sc then shift statistics and distribution is here on one and then distribution is five and of course this is for greater than so for greater than i said it is r so you will put three and then from there uh, i can put this 69.5 okay subtract the mean 72 then you divide by root of 7.2 here and then when you do that and we close then we shall get 0 0.82425 okay so uh, to three significant figures it will be 0 0.824 and that will be the answer there okay then the, the last question they are saying that find the number of different arrangements of the nine letters in the word alligator in which the two a's are together and the two o's are together now you can put these uh spaces here for the letters like i've done here one two three four five six seven eight nine now if a's are together that means that is one uh one group and if the two l's are also together that is one group okay then one, two, three, four, these are other five. So that means altogether you have five plus one plus one, that is seven. So it is going to be seven factorial. Okay. Because these ones are identical, we shall not consider them being arranged in a line and they are identical. But I put this one in brackets here to show you that this is A. It can be, because the, it is in line here, it can be arranged in two factorial ways. Okay. Two factorial. A can be here, this one here. And the other one here then they can switch so two factorial but still since we are arranging them in a line then we can divide by their factorial okay so in permutations and combinations we have um let me show you something here the number of permutations of n objects of which p are identical to one another q of the remainder are identical to one another and so on so this is how we do it n factorial out of p factorial q factorial so these ones are identical okay identical q factorial so we are also dividing by these two factorial because a's are identical twos of i mean l's are also identical so you may not even write this so the moment you see these ones are identical just write this seven factorial and you get 50 40. next part they tell us that the nine letters in the word alligator are arranged in a random order find the probability that the two l's are together and there are exactly six letters between the two a's so i can put uh, my letters here so i count six in between one two three four five six and then that means here we are left with one because they are nine uh, these are six then plus the two a's that are uh, that means that one is eight and then one here so it becomes nine now, these are the letters that are remaining, I, G, T, O, R. If I put my A's and then the L's, remember the L's are supposed to be together. So you cannot put them outside here because this is one space. They will just be inside here. Okay. And then out of these uh, five letters, there are five ways 
of putting a letter here. I can put I, I can put G, I can put T, or R. So those are five ways. Okay. Then the rest of the letters, the four of them, I'll put here. I'll put them here. But of course, these two L's are together. That means this is one group. So plus the four, then how they will be arranged here, it will be five factorial. So that means we shall have five factorial, then times the five ways of arranging a letter here. So again, I can shift my A here, and then this one, this side here. So that means it is the same thing here, five ways of arranging a letter here, then here five factorial because four of them that are remaining, and then one group for the L. So that is five factorial. So it is also going to be five factorial times five. So this one is appearing two times. So total number of ways will be 2 times 5 factorial times 5, which is 1,200. But they are telling us to find a probability that the two L's are together and there are exactly six letters between the two A's. So that means we are going to look at the total number of ways without any restriction. So if these are nine letters, that would be nine factorial. Then divide by, we are seeing two A's, so there will be two factorial and then two L's. Okay? So... That is 9 factorial out of 2 factorial times 2 factorial. So here I'm showing you that this is 2 L's, 2 repeating L's, 2 factorial here, and then 2 A's. If there was any other letter that was repeating, then still we would include it here. So altogether that is 9720. So probability will be the other 1200, then divide by 9720. And then simplified it becomes 5 out of 370. Eight. And then part C. Now part C, they are telling us that find the number of different selections of five letters from the nine letters in the word alligator, which contain at least one A and at most one L. So we have to get some scenarios here. We have A and L. So if they are different, uh, we shall therefore just choose from the letters which are different. Okay. So you don't see that now, for example, you, you don't say like, for example, here we're having A, we can have one, then no L. But they said at least one A and at most one L. So at least means greater than or equal. And then at most means less than or equal. So zero. So one for A, zero, then four remaining here. And then one, one, this will be three. Then two, zero, three. Then two, one, two. See that? So these are the ones here. So these spaces that are here, because the A's are two, I won't say two combination one, then five combination four. No, because they say number of different selections. So I don't consider the selections of the A's because these are identical. Okay? So we shall have five combination four, which is equal to five. Okay? And uh, then A and L, so these are three. So out of the five, which is three, then again here, out of the five, which is three, and then out of the five here, which is two, then all of this together, we add them, and we get our answer as 35. So that marks the end of this paper. Thank you very much for watching. May God bless you.